Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Chajmat in the five minute pool in ICC. Uh, let's play a French against him. Not an opening adventured in Blitz, but we'll see how it goes. And it's an advanced variation. Okay. We'll play knight c6. Queen b6. Some people play the advanced variation for black without uh, the bishop coming, or without the queen coming to b6. Okay, he's offering to go into this uh, so called. Um, Milner Berry Gambit? Yeah, that's the name of it. Took me a second. I think I'm supposed to go a6 now, as I recall, to stop any bishop b5 unpleasantness. And then knight c3, I think, is the move. So he's given up a pawn in the center, but he gets like nice open lines. This is probably like a specialty weapon. I did actually face this one time in a standard game. King h1 is intending to prepare f4. Let's just do this. Hmm. So I can bring the knight to c6 or g6. I need to move the knight so I can get the bishop out. I think probably knight here is best. And then f4, how will I continue? Hmm. Knight b4, bishop b1, queen c4 maybe? Hmm. Doesn't seem like a terrible idea. He has queen f3. Let's try that though. I think this could be reasonable. Now, f5 is a little bit scary. I mean, oh, trying to open uh, the king side, which is almost certainly where I want to bring my king. Very unlikely that I'd be able to castle queen side successfully. So with this, I'm just trying to distract him, like force his bishop back. And I think this queen c4 move is useful. Maybe I'll play here first, though. Well, then he can go a3. Better play this right away. Hmm. I wonder on queen, queen f3 if bishop c6 is any good. He's not going to trade queens. I would be shocked if he did that. So he's going to move his queen. If queen f3, bishop e7, or bishop c5. Then if f5, what am I doing? Hmm. That looks kind of annoying. He's thinking though. Yeah, queen f3. Maybe knight back to c6 is not a bad idea. Just to keep an eye on this pawn. g6 is also probably not a bad idea. Let's play g6. This weakens my f6 square, so I hope he like can never land a knight in there in the future. But I want to stop f5. That's like his primary idea. Develops the bishop. Let's do the same. Is a3 a problem? Hmm. Bishop e7, a3, knight c6, bishop d3. I can keep my queen active, queen b3. That should be okay. Okay, let's play that way. Was oh, he gonna go rook c1? Maybe, maybe not. Bishop a2, that's the way he's going. Okay, well, now I have to play queen a5. Or queen c5, rather. Hmm. So he's gaining a bunch of tempos. Knight d4. Seems a little artificial. Probably need to move my queen again. As much as I'd like to avoid doing that. Well, we're up a pawn, but he has certain activity. He's ahead in development. We still haven't fully consolidated because our king is in the middle. So can Shamat cook up some further play? G4 seems pretty radical. I mean, it weakens his king severely, but it would be a consistent way to try to try to get in F5. I don't think a sacrifice on D5 really works. It looks pretty cool, but just probably comes up short. Maybe it'd be tough to defend against, though. Like, bishop takes d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5, threatening knight c7. If I were to castle there, he has rook takes c6. Might be something. He does it. Okay. He heard me. <laughs> I mean, I kind of got to take. So, anything else is pretty cowardly. <laughs>
Uh, so knight c7 is the threat. If castling, there's that take. And then my bishop on e7 hangs is the issue. So I think rook c8 probably. Thing is, I still can't castle even on the next move because rook takes c6 will still be there. But maybe I can play bishop e6. I think bishop e6 would be a good consolidation move. If he eliminates this dark square bishop, I gotta watch my king. My dark squares will be in serious jeopardy. Let's check Shamat's finger notes real quick. Jose Gascon from Venezuela. Peak five minute rating of 2468. He's using time, which is helpful. Maybe the bishop can come into b6, bishop or knight, but I think I can deal with those threats. It's hard as the attacking player, too. He's burning a lot of time because he's trying to figure out how to follow up on his sacrifice. When you invest material, you feel this obligation to continue pressing. You don't want to cede the initiative and allow your opponent to consolidate and get back in the game. But he's going to be under a minute soon. I think maybe like rook fd1 would be decent. Then knight b6 could be strengthened because he would be attacking my bishop with both pieces. Plays knight b6 anyways, okay. Probably rook here. I'm not going to spend too much time figuring out which one is better. I'd still like to move this bishop, bishop e6 or maybe bishop f5. Let's say he plays rook fd1, bishop e6. Um, I don't think a capture on c6 really works too well for him. He's actually going for the g4 idea, interesting. Okay, let's castle. I can do this now. If f5, we can take e5. So this could be a big help. Um, bishop takes g4, he has knight takes e7 with check. So let's just consolidate, defend the rook another time. Okay, so now I think I can play, well, he still has knight takes e7, annoyingly. Bishop e6 looks decent here, though. Yeah, let's do that. Threatening the knight. Yeah, he resigned. Yeah, his attack was burning out. He didn't hardly have any time either. Okay, let's go back and have a look. So a French advance. You know, the French is one opening uh, throughout my chess career. I've always like thought about playing it more seriously, but I've never done it. I've played it OTB like twice, but only like for very specific reasons. Like I played a certain system like in two games and I just gave it up. Um, it was the Fort Knox variation, if you're curious. But um, it actually would fit my style pretty well. Because it's uh, it's a positional opening. It's deeply rooted in strategic themes, and I don't know. I've always like done pretty well with it online. I guess I haven't played it against super strong players most of the time. Like this is honestly probably one of the highest rated players I played the French against. But maybe I'll consider adding it to my repertoire. Let's take a look here. There is theory in this variation that I don't know about. Um, good rule of thumb with gambits, which. You know, you want to practice even in a case like this is taking the first pawn is okay. Taking the second pawn is usually dangerous. So here, for instance, if he plays knight c3, it's a well-known mistake to take on e5. White goes rook e1, and he's going to get all sorts of play. If the queen drops back too far to like c7, there's knight takes d5. You don't really want to mess with this if you're black. So I'm okay with taking the d pawn, but I actually want to leave this e pawn here because that helps like shield my king from e-file threats. So you played queen e2, I just guarded that b5 square. I guess knight e7 would also maybe serve that purpose. If bishop b5, we can play knight to c6. So that might even be better. Uh, king h1, as I said, that's preparation for f4. So knight e7 just developing. And I got the knight over to c6, attacking the pawn, so he defends it. Then I embarked on this mini operation with knight b4 and queen c4 to come. I guess a developing move also could be played like bishop c5. Maybe bishop c5 is better because he doesn't have bishop e3 in this case. Could play bishop d2 though and bring his rook to the center. So knight b4, bishop back to b1, queen c4, queen
queen f3. I think he spent a little bit too long on that move. He had 4 minutes 13 seconds, and yeah, spent like 45 seconds on that one, almost. In my opinion, like that was nearly forced. The computer says queen takes c4 is better, but I mean, queen takes c4 is kind of an admission that you're just going to be down a pawn with no particular compensation. So here, okay, so d4 is very strong. What did I miss? d4, knight e4, d3. Cutting out this bishop and maybe threatening bishop c6. Maybe knight c2. Hmm, okay. I played g6. There was a certain point in this game where I kind of realized he was going to take a long time. So I tried to make like quick, solid decisions. Um, g6 looks to be a mistake though, doesn't it? We'll find out why. a3, knight c6, bishop a2, similar to the game. Queen c5, bishop e3, queen a5, and then bishop takes d5. Okay. So if he does it in this case, as opposed to when my queen's on b8, after take and take, one very annoying thing, in addition to him threatening knight f6, my bishop is not yet on e7, he's also threatening bishop e6, cutting off the queen from defending c7. Okay, so maybe I don't have time to play g6. I don't know if that line is completely forced. I was just following the engine moves, but maybe I don't have time to do this. d4 is better in more forcing fashion. But he played bishop d2 and sort of wriggled free. Rook c1, queen back here. And then he went bombs away and took. But it felt like I was able to defend without too much trouble. Rook c8, just defending this. So as I said, if I castle here, trying to get out of um, his threats right away, rook takes c6, remove the defender, and then he takes e7. And he's doing very well. Like say, for instance, take, Check. take, um, let's say king h8. I mean, I think he could even take here and still do pretty well because my dark squares are entirely compromised around my king. So like even a move like bishop c3 is really unpleasant. But um, I guess he doesn't even have to do that. There might even be stronger moves. Queen g3, just get out of the way. Keep this knight for a second. And if this queen gets up closer to my king, I'm going to be in, in, in serious trouble. So rook c8, bishop e3, queen b8. And he just kind of ran out of gas here. It's not easy to find a follow-up. Maybe bishop c5, as the computer was saying a second ago. Because if he could trade the dark square bishops, this f6 square... Um, is a possible outpost for him. Again, I have bishop e6, though. So if take here, take here, in between move, destroy the knight, and then take the bishop. Like, queen takes, knight takes e7. So it might be defendable for black already. He chose knight e6, rook d8, g4. Yeah, and I don't think I should have too many concerns after this. We're safe. He's not able to play f5 so easily because he drops this. And with his king open, if my bishop makes an appearance on c6, it's all over almost instantly. So, I mean, at the time he plays g4, this is just desperation. I mean, there's not really much else to do. I would probably do the same because there's... You just kind of got to choose something aggressive and go with it. Especially with that little amount of time that he had. And here he resigned. I'm going to be trading or winning g4 or... Something bad is going to happen for him. Okay. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this game. I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.